Sya Gyananjana Shavakaya Chaksur Unmilitanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Vai Evacha Patitana Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadada Shri Vasari Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So welcome to Bhakti Shastri and we're on the 11th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. And uh, we got up to this point. Arjuna had asked, excuse me, Arjuna had asked Lord Krishna, who are you? And Krishna re replies like this, the time I am. And then he requests Arjuna to become an instrument. <coughs> become an instrument. <coughs> oh dear Krishna. Become an instrument in my service. Right? So. <coughs> so here's the first. This is the first verse which uh, Krishna speaks in response to Arjuna. Kalosmi loka kaya, loka shaya krit pravridho. Right? Time I am, the great destroyer. <coughs> oh, dear. The great destroyer of the world, and I have come here to destroy all people. With the exception of you, the Pandavas, all the soldiers here on both sides will be slain. <coughs> okay, so this is Lord Krishna's first response. Because Lord Krishna has show, shown this form of time. Recording and, in progress. And within that form, within that form, they could see all the people entering into the mouths. Bhishma, and Drona, Karna. They were all being destroyed. So Arjuna was shocked. But Lord Krishna was showing to Arjuna that these people are all going to die. Whether Arjuna fights or not, they're going to die. Lord Krishna had decided that they have to die. And it's up to Arjuna to decide what he wants to do. Lord Krishna wants Arjuna to know that they're definitely going to die. And the Pandavas are not going to die. And so this is like an encouragement to Arjuna that he should take part in the battle, that he's assured of victory. He's assured of the protection of Lord Krishna. And all of the enemy, all of the Kauravas, they're all going to die. They're all going to leave the world. Right, so this is from Prabhupada's purport on this verse. Can somebody please read? Eventually, all the Brahmanas, Kshatriyas and everyone else are devoured like a meal by the Supreme. This form of the Supreme Lord is the all devouring giant. And here Krishna presents himself in that form of all devouring time. Except for a few Pandavas, everyone who was present on that battlefield will be devoured by him. 
Arjuna was not in favor of the fight and he thought it was better not to fight. Then there would be no frustration. In reply, the Lord is saying that even if he did not fight, every one of them would be destroyed. For that was his plan. If Arjuna stopped fighting, they would die in another way. Death could not be checked, even if he did not fight. In fact, they were already dead. Time is destruction and all manifestations are to be vanquished by the desire of the Supreme Lord. That is the law of nature. Thank you, Prima. All right, so Prabhupada's explaining very clearly here about this uh, form of time and what it means and how Arjuna should be convinced that he should surrender to Krishna. And here is the verse where Lord Krishna is instructing Arjuna to become the instrument. Text number 33. Dasmatvam utishta yasho labasva jitva shatram bhunksha rajam samirtam mayaivite nihitam purvam eva nimita matram bhavasavya sachin. So the last line is often quoted. Nimita matram bhava savya sachin. Arjuna is known as savya sachin because he's very expert in firing arrows. It's said he, he could fire both with the left hand and with the right hand. He was amb ambidextrous, right? Some people have that ability. They can write with the left hand and with the right hand. So Arjuna could fire arrows, left-handed and right-handed. And Arjuna could even fire arrows in the dark. So he was really Savya Satchin, very expert. And uh, he's encouraged to become an instrument in the service of Krishna. So the idea of being an instrument is that you don't take credit for what you're doing. You're simply an instrument in the hands of others. It's, it's uh, the person who's holding the instruments, who's actually doing everything, who, who's responsible. So Lord Krishna tells Arjuna, don't think you are the doer, just become an instrument in my service. Of course, we've heard this before in earlier texts about uh, karma yoga, do your duty in a detached manner, karmani evadikara ste mapaleshu kadachana. Right? You have a right to perform your duty, but you're not entitled to enjoy the results of the work. Never consider yourself to be the cause of the results. And never be attached to not doing your duty. So, similar here, become an instrument in the fight. That you're not the doer, Arjuna. Just, just understand that Krishna is actually arranging everything. So, Lord Krishna speaks like this. Therefore, get up, prepare to fight and win glory. Conquer your enemies and enjoy a flourishing kingdom. They are already put to death by my arrangement. And you, O Savyasachi, can be but an instrument in the fight. So generally we think Arjuna is the hero. But Lord Krishna is telling him, you're just an instrument in the fight. It's all going on by the arrangement of Lord Krishna. All of these Kauravas, they are already put to death by the arrangement of Lord Krishna. So Lord Krishna is detaching Arjuna from the situation and at the same time encouraging him 
to take part in the battle. All right, someone can read this quote here from, from the purport. Bhagavad Gita, purport 11.33. Savya Sachin refers to one who can shoot arrows very expertly in the field. Thus, Arjuna is addressed as an expert warrior capable of delivering arrows to kill his enemies. Just become an instrument. Nimitta Matram. This word is also very significant. The whole world is moving according to the plan of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Foolish persons who do not have sufficient knowledge think that nature is moving without a plan and all manifestations are but accidental formations. Thank you, Manaji. No. So, Nimitta Matram, become an instrument. Don't think you're the doer, it's the plan of Krishna. We're all, we have that choice to accept the plan of Krishna or the plan of Maya. Which way do you want to go? We have some choice there, we can choose. So Arjuna has some independence also. Later on you'll see in the 18th chapter, Lord Krishna says, so what are you going to do, Arjuna? What are you going to do? Of course, we heard in, uh, in, chapter, in chapter 10, Lord Arjuna had said, Sarvam itam ritam manye yamam vadisi keshava, that I totally accept as truth all that you have told me. So Arjuna has really strong faith in Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna, of course, knows that Arjuna is his devotee. And that's why he's speaking Bhagavad Gita to him. But he wants, what does he want from his devotee? He wants him to become an instrument in his service. We all should become instruments in the service of Krishna. And remember, we are simply instruments. He is the actual doer. If we can be a good instrument. Sometimes we say, if, if, it's, if it turns out good, then we should give the credit to Krishna. And if it's not good, then it's our fault. But, but usually it turns out the other way. When, the, when, the, when we fail, we say, well, Krishna's mercy. But when we succeed, we say, I did it. We want to take the credit. So we have to become detached from everything and try to surrender to Krishna. All right, now this is a quote from Srimad Bhagavatam, fourth canto, chapter 24, text number 45, 46. Who would like to read? That is the beauty of the Lord's uh, dealings with His devotees. Sometimes the Lord gives more credit to His devotees than He takes for Himself. For instance, on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, Lord Krishna fought simply giving directions. Yet it was Arjuna who took the credit for fighting. Nimitta Matram Bhava Savya Sachin. You, O Savya Sachi, Arjuna can be but an instrument in the fight. Bhagavad Gita 11.33. Everything was arranged by the Lord, but the credit of victory was given to Arjuna. Similarly, in the Krishna consciousness movement, everything is happening according to the predictions of Lord Chaitanya, but the credit goes to Lord Chaitanya's sincere servants. Srimad Bhagavatam 4.24.45.6. All right, so we've highlighted this point that sometimes the Lord gives more credit to his devotees than he takes for himself. Just like we see Hanuman gets the credit also in fighting in Lanka. He fought so help, so nicely in the service of Lord Rama. And here at Kurukshetra, Arjuna also he gets the credit generally, we think of Arjuna as being the hero, 
But Prabhupada points out everything was arranged by Krishna. So Prabhupada said also, go out and preach. Everything is arranged by Krishna. Krishna can do everything. Krishna could do it all himself, but he gives us the opportunity to get some credit, to play some part in Krishna's mission. If we don't do it, someone else will come later and they will do it and they will get the credit. Prabhupada used to tell us like that. He would say, go and preach. He said, if you, if you don't go, there's somebody else will go later and they will get the credit. You have the chance. Go now and do something for Krishna and get the credit. Just as Arjuna got the credit for fighting in Kurukshetra, although it was all arranged by Krishna. Okay, so a little exercise for you. Discuss a time when you became Krishna's instrument and accomplished a task that was ordinarily beyond your capability. What happened? How did you feel? What general principles can you draw from your experience? How many people do we have here today? 18 Guru Maharaj. All right. So what, we, we could work in pairs, right? I think if in pairs it's better you can discuss with each other. How much time do you need? Maybe five minutes, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Um, Maybe more? Okay, let's take ten minutes. Okay. Is it okay with you? All right, yeah. Just a minute. Can you all please join Dayanidhi Prabhu, you have not joined. Guru Smarana Mataji, Chagruti Mataji, Nabaraj Prabhu, kindly join. Okay, let's join this.
class? Just now, class. Now I have class. Now, until nine o'clock. Nine o'clock finish. Okay, Guru Maharaj, all of us are back. All right, thank you. Okay, so maybe Dr. Guru Smarana would like to tell us what she discussed. Krishna um, I mean, my group, I had Jagriti Mataji, and in her realization, she is telling that how she was asked without her knowing to uh, perform kirtan. And uh, she was um, not, uh, she felt she wasn't capable and even didn't know how to play the instruments. But uh, after doing so, despite being, um, uh, not knowing how to do, she said she's feeling very good because of her doing kirtan. So many people are now inviting her to her homes and asking for kirtan and japa, and she's feeling very good by doing so. And this way, there's lots of uh, preaching opportunity for her, as well as people are uh, um, accepting Krishna conscious very nicely. So this was her realization. As far as mine is concerned, I do not want to speak much, but I can only say that in my last, in my Srila Gurudev's, my spiritual master's last trip to Fiji, he instructed me personally to build a house for him in Fiji. And he did specify where I should do it and how. And then um, um, I was still uh, 
I would say I was a very complacent person. I thought in due course of time, I'll definitely build a house for him. He said, make sure it's on a seafront view in a freehold property. <laughs> and uh, my god sister, Gita Kirti, they started looking, going around here and they are looking for a place as such. But I was so complacent, busy with my work. I thought if Shira Gurdev has asked for it, uh, definitely in due course of time, I will do it. But never knew that he will leave me so soon. And um, after he left, that's when reality really hit me. And I said, this is what he wanted from me. But I cannot make a house whereby I know he personally won't come and see, uh, see um, I mean, be with me. So um, I changed the house idea into making a temple, which we have constructed here in Singatoka, Fiji, which is named under Shri Shri Radha Damodar Temple. Everything fit in so nicely with his pastime that he also had a Radha Damodar party and we have a Radha Damodar GTC and also um, the, in the last trip he kept telling me that wherever you, wherever I stay, that will be your house. So, and um, every time people come here, they say to me that whenever they come, they feel so much Guru Dev's presence here. They feel so Guru, Guru Smaran is here and Guru Smarna is here. And, and I feel now that maybe that's what he used me for. So, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Very sweet. Very nice. Wonderful. Right. So, who else do we have? Who would like to volunteer? And then the Prabhupada Maharaj. All right. Uh, Maharaj, actually, one day I had gone to uh, Maya Buddha. There he, I met uh, His Holiness Bhakti Purushottam Maharaj. He told that you, are, you belong to a scientific community. You should do a pandal program there for your scientific community. I told Maharaj, I am the only devotee. Nobody will uh, join and uh, I can't also do such type of uh, activity. At that time, Maharaj told, no, no, you can do. You will try. So when I came back to uh, our scientific class, my uh, job area, then after 15 days, I uh, planned and I planned for uh, 1,000 uh, person for the uh, attending and uh, for Prasadam also and also big uh, panel program. And I invited Maharaj. Maharaj came and more than 1,000 people joined and everybody became happy and uh, started uh, starting their spiritual activity after that lecture. So uh, I was the instrument, but uh, I was thinking that it was not possible to arrange such a big panel program and all our atheists, but all scientific communities are they're just to the opposite things. So that's uh, my experience for us. Thank you very much. So what principle can you draw from your experience? Uh, from this uh, uh, experience, I feel that uh, what we can do by the blessing of uh, Krishna and uh, Whatever the spiritual programs or spiritual matters, by the mercy of Krishna and Gurudev and uh, the higher persons, uh, higher Vaishnavas, we can do anything for their service. Oh, you can do anything, eh? <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Very bold. Good. Yes, anybody else like to volunteer? Thank you, Maharaj. Yes. Uh, actually, we conducted two two radhyatras in our place, um, but this me and my brother uh, only who conducted. Nobody else is there. So, by the mercy of Guru Goranga and Krishna, we conduct two radhyatras. So, I, I feel that by the, if we have the mercy of Guru and Krishna, then we can easily conduct any type of festival for the satisfaction of Sisi Goranga, Krishna, Radha Krishna, and Hare Krishna. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Madhaji, please. In my group, Supremi Mataji and Ras Bihari Prabhu were there. So we were discussing like, uh, it's like whatever we do, sometimes we think that this work is very easy for us, but actually when we start doing that work, we feel like how difficult this work is. This is like beyond our thing, beyond our capability. But that is only by mercy of Guru and Gauranga like we were able to do. For me, like I think like whatever people also I am bringing, I am uh, very new to Krishna conscious. So I am preaching myself right now, but whatever people I am bring to, bringing to Krishna consciousness or to my Guru Maharaj is like, uh, because I am not the doer and that is uh, because of mercy of Guru and Gauranga itself. Because 
how they get get convinced even i am not convinced of certain things so how they get, get convinced uh, on my what how i am preaching that is like mercy of guru and gauranga and also like recently i felt like uh, in patna inauguration uh, i was not initiated at that time and like our old whole team got one opportunity to cook for dt first time uh, when uh, they had to offer in temple so i was not initiated and like i was not knowing any rules and regulations and i was like scared how will i cook and it was coming again and again so in like whole team not i only but other people were also there so my shiksha guru was there so she told only one thing do out of love don't fear like that because i am not a proper cook in my home itself like i led a i was having a bachelor life when i was having work like uh, in job when i was in job so that fast fast cooking i know and something like not a proper cooking kind of thing but making 108 items and who and that to for dt and that too when i don't know rules and regulations so same day uh, that thing is coming and same day i have to learn that rules and regulations also hmm. but something like is beyond rules and regulations also that service was given by mercy of guru and gauranga and finally we did it like i was a part of that so uh, that was a thing and like i feel that we should have that endeavor and desire in our heart and guru and gauranga will fulfill that oh, so. very nice yes I have something to add to it, uh, Maharaj. Um, just one uh, thought that uh, many times we think that we can do it, and then later on we realize that oh my God, it's so tough. It wasn't so easy. So um, in the case of Arjuna, it so happened that uh, Arjuna was known for his fighting all over the world, and he was everyone was scared to fight with Arjuna. And Arjuna was always thinking that he can defeat anybody. So if he has defeated the whole Kurukshetra, he has won this battle. then he can defeat every, everybody and uh, at the end when krishna left this world at that time when arjuna was attacked by a set of um, tribes uh, he was protecting the wives of krishna and taking them back at that time when he was um, uh, attacked he was defeated and uh, it was quite a shock to him and because he really thought uh, he has won the kurukshetra battle and uh, it was impossible for arjuna to get defeated and he got defeated so we understand that rakhi krishna mare ke mare krishna rakhi ke so anything can happen it is just by guru and krishna's mercy things go and nothing is in our hands so we have to learn to surrender <laughs> that's the principle yeah, i understand yeah. all yeah. right thank you very nice thank you very much for your realization there all, you, all right so we we do want to endeavor and try even though th things may seem beyond us but we have to depend on krishna and you can see in prabhupada's arrival prayer in prabhupada's mood in offering his prayers he felt himself unqualified also he thought you know such a difficult task to come to the america and doesn't know anyone he's no money and you know preaching in the western world he hadn't been there before but he just prayed to krishna and so surrendered to krishna and krishna krishna helped krishna took care of him and sent people krishna as prabhupada said make me dance make me dance make me dance so prabhupada was like a puppet in the hands of krishna we have to be like that like arjuna an instrument in the hands of krishna oh, what happened where are we All right, text thirty-four. Text thirty-four. Drona, Bhishma, Jayadrata, Karna, and the other great warriors have already been destroyed by me. Therefore, kill them and do not be disturbed. Simply fight, and you will vanquish your enemies in battle. So Krishna is encouraging Arjuna: just fight, just do your duty. You will defeat your enemies. So many great warriors, Drona, Bhishma, Dhrata, Karna, they're all going to die. They have to die. All right, someone like to read? Hare Krishna, Bhagavad Gita, Purport 11.34. Every plan is made by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. but he is so kind and merciful to his devotees that he wants to give the credit to his devotees who carry out his plan according to his desire 
life should therefore move in such a way that everyone acts in Krishna consciousness and understands the Supreme Personality of Godhead through the medium of a spiritual master. The plans of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are understood by His mercy and the plans of the devotees are as good as His plans. One should follow such plans and be victorious in this struggle for existence. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, very nice. We know Prabhupada gave different instructions to devotees. Prabhupada had his plans, how to spread Krishna consciousness, right? He planned the, the farms with the cow protection, and he planned also the Bhaktivedanta Institute to preach to the scientists, and Gurukula for the children, education. All of these, these were different plans which Prabhupada had for spreading Krishna consciousness. I was hearing the other day, here in Mayapur, we celebrated the Vyasa Puja of His Holiness Bhakti Raghava Swami. And Bhakti Raghava Swami was pointing out one of Prabhupada's plans was to have Varnashram colleges. He wanted Varnashram colleges everywhere. But in general, people are not educated even to know what is Varnashram. <laughs> so that's why we need Varnashram colleges, so people can be educated to understand the importance of Varnashram. Mm. Prabhupada's plans, mm. restaurants, mm. prasadam distribution, mm. as well as deity worship and book distribution. Prabhupada had lots of plans. And we're, we're meant to help Prabhupada fulfill these plans. Okay, we're going ahead to this final section here of the fourth chap of the eleventh chapter, Arjuna's prayers. All right, someone can read for us, me. Hare Krishna. Saketi Matva Prasabham Yad Uktam He Krishna He Yadava He Saketi Bhagavad Gita 1141 Thinking of you as my friend, I have rashly addressed you. O Krishna, O Yadava, O my friend, not knowing your glories, please forgive me. Please forgive whatever I may have done in madness or in love. I have dishonored you many times jesting as we relaxed, lay on the same bed, or sat or ate together, sometimes alone and sometimes in front of many friends. Oh, infallible one, please excuse me for all those offenses. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Yes, so this is a well-known verse from the 11th chapter, that line, Hey Krishna, Hey Yadava, Hey Saketi where Arjuna, uh, Arjuna is talking to Krishna like that. Oh my friend, oh Krishna, oh Yadava, oh my friend, not knowing your glories. Arjuna admits now, after seeing the Vishwarup and after hearing from Krishna about his Kala Rup, Arjuna understood, understands now that he had acted. He said, I've done it either in madness or in love. Maybe it was both madness, love, madness in his love. <laughs> That's also there, it's a symptom of bhava. Arjuna feels, I've dishonored you. Jo we would lay on the same bed, we'd eat together, and sometimes in front of many friends, I would, I would not give you proper respect. So Arjuna is asking, please excuse me, excuse me for all those offences. This is a Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's explanation of these verses. Yes, someone can read. Hi, Krishna. 
O oh, I have committed the greatest offense to you, who are filled with such great, great powers. In this way, Arjuna manifests great, great, great. O oh, Krishna, hey Krishna, you are well known as the son of Vasudev, who is not famous, who was a human, a medical fighter, situated on the same chariot as another fighter, Artharatha. I, Arjuna, am well known as the son of a king, Pandu, a great warrior, fighting on his own chariot, Atiratha. O Yadava, hey Yadava, you do not have the king's position in the Yadu dynasty, but I have kinship over the Puru dynasty. The Sandhi of Sakha with Iti it is poetic license. O friend, he hey Sakha, my friendship with you is not because of the greatness of your forefathers, nor because of the reputation of your family, but it is simply based on familiarity. Hi. Okay. So Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur is explaining about these different words. First of all, O oh Krishna, hey Krishna. So the, I, the point is that you are well known as the son of Vasudev. And Vasudev, he's, he's not really a Maharati. He's just some, you know, he, he, although he's Kshatriya, he, he's not well known, he's not famous. He didn't fight. He was more of a politician, a diplomat. And we know when, when Vasudev married Devaki, at that time he, he managed to pacify the mind of Kamsa. He, he didn't fight with Kamsa, but he pacified him. He used his intelligence and he, he used his integrity to make some agreement with Kamsa that when Devaki gives birth, we will give you the children. So this was Vasudev. He, he was intelligent, but he wasn't famous. And he was a human, a mediocre fighter. <laughs> All right, and then mm, Arjuna says, I'm well known as the son of a king, Pandu, a great warrior, fighting on his own. You do not have the kingship. You don't have the king's position. Hey Krishna, hey Yadava, right? Oh Yadava, so you don't have the position of a king. The Yadavas, they don't have any kingdom. I have, I have kingship over the Puru dynasty. And then I'm calling you my friend. Hey, Hey Krishna, hey Yadava, hey Saketi. I'm, I'm, I'm being kind to you. I'm allowing you to be my friend. The, Arjuna was thinking like that. He was thinking, I'm being kind to you. I allow you to be my friend. He didn't understand the actual position of Lord Krishna. So, it, as Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur says, Arjuna's friendship with Krishna is not because of the greatness of Krishna's forefathers, nor because of the reputation of the family, but it is simply based on familiarity. So this is Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's explanation. I in other places it says, uh, I'm allowing you to be my friend. Although, although we're not equal, I'll be kind to you. I'll allow you to be my friend. This was uh, Arjuna's kindness to Krishna. So, Maharaj, is it because uh, uh, Ugrasena was the king always after Kamsa, Ugrasena was the king, so he's not referring Krishna as the king? Yes, well, Krishna put Ugrasena as the king. That's also there, yeah. Ugrasena became the king. Krishna, uh, Ugrasena, of course, is Krishna's uh, grandfather. So, uh, I mean, somewhere he was taking care of Dwaraka, no? So I got to this country. I thought Krishna was also a king. Yes. Of course, he, we think of Krishna as Dwarkadish. He's the lord of Dwarka and everything. But actually, Krishna 
he, he, he just thought, put Ugrasena on the throne. He thought, let Ugrasena be, be the king. He, Krishna didn't want to do it. He thought it'd be nicer to give respect to his uh, grandfather because he'd been persecuted so much by Kamsa. But generally we do think of Krishna as the Lord of Dwarka. Yeah. All right, so Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur continues, he said, I beg pardon, speaking on behalf of Arjuna, I beg par pardon for such rough words, prasabam. I have spoken for intending the above meanings. So the sense of verse 41 is continued in verse 42 with the verb shamayi. The proper form of the verb will be shamayam. I should beg for forgiveness, either through negligence or out of affection, not knowing you as the universal form. Mahimanam. I have treated you badly during leisure and other times in order to joke. I have scolded you with sarcastic words, saying that you are truthful, innocent, and very gullible. I beg forgiveness for the thousands of offenses produced when you were alone, not in the presence of friends, or when you were surrounded by friends who were joking. Tat samak sam. Oh Master, I beg you to forgive me. Shamaye. So, uh, some different points come up. <laughs> he says, I scolded you with sar sarcastic words, saying that you are truthful. <laughs> because we know sometimes Krishna will tell lies. And sometimes Krishna will give his word, he'll break his promise, like that. And innocent and very gullible. <laughs> of course, Krishna knows everything. He's the most supreme intelligent. But he's playing the part like that. And Arjuna is bewildered by, by Yoga Maya. So he's thinking of Krishna in these different ways, being sarcastic. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur explains that Arjuna is lamenting his previous over-familiar relationship with Krishna. For example, he would usually call Krishna Krishna and not the more honorific Sri Krishna. Or we could say Lord Sri Krishna. Oh. Sri Krishna is certainly more proper. And Arjuna is referring to Krishna as Krishna also indi indicates that Krishna is the son of Vasudev, who was merely a minister, whereas Arjuna's father Pandu was a great warrior. Similarly, Arjuna, a member of the royal Pandava dynasty, would refer to Krishna as Yadava a member of the family, unable to rule. Unable to rule, that, that, well, they were in Dwarka, but then they moved to, well, they were in Mathura, but Krishna moved everyone to Dwarka. So Dwarka, Krishna created the island there, where the, everyone lived. And so it, it practically like they didn't have a kingdom. It was like a family, who, they were not able to rule. Furthermore, Arjuna would at times say, Oh my friend, as if being condescendingly kind. In other words, Arjuna is thinking, Although I am superior to you, out of my affection, I accept you as my friend. Now, aware of Krishna's actual position, Arjuna feels ashamed and begs forgiveness. 
So this is this last slide that is from Surrender Unto Me. Very John Prabhu is quoting how Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur describes the use of these terms He Krishna, He Yadava and He Saketi. So another little exercise which we can do that if we work in pairs, ask the following, Arjuna begged forgiveness for offences that he committed out of ignorance. Do we sometimes commit offences out of ignorance? Especially when we are new devotees. Share remembrances of such times and what we learn from such experiences. We all have that experience of being new devotees, coming to Krishna consciousness. Well, not everyone. Some of you, of course, may be born in Krishna consciousness. But some of us, at least, we come to Krishna consciousness, we're new devotees, and we're not really aware of all the rules and regulations, what you're supposed to do. We just heard one of the Madhijis say how she had to cook and she didn't know all the rules and all the, what you're supposed to do. But somehow she went in the kitchen. So sometimes we commit offences out of ignorance. So, so we want to hear some remembrances. And what did we learn? Did you learn from the experience? Well, of course, somebody tells you, you can't do this. Prabhu, don't put the book on the floor. Oh, sorry Prabhu, you know, you put the book on the floor, well, from now on you don't put the book on the floor. So that's a common thing. Or the instruments also, we don't place the instruments on the floor. So these are common things which we often do as new devotees, we're not very much aware. Anyway, we'll just give you five minutes. Just take five minutes to talk about this, see if you can come up with some examples and what we learn. Padmalochan Prabhu, yeah? Okay, Guru Maharaj.
Guru Maharaj, all of us are back. All right. Okay, so um, what's here? It's Dhyanidhi Prabhu, is there? Maharaj, actually, I came to ISKCON in 1995. When first time I had joined uh, ISKCON program in 1995, at that time, uh, one uh, devotee was singing the song, Jai Krishna, Sai Go, Sai Jagannath. Then I reacted. I told him, you are telling some fraud things here. Because uh, Mahaprabhu, Gaur is not Jagannath, that he is not Krishna, he is devotee of Krishna. Uh, then uh, some people dragged me and they told that they just wait. Then they recommended one book uh, uh, by his witness, Orvun Maras, that the mystery of the Lord Jagannath's past times. They told that you just uh, read this book. So I read that book and I convinced. Later on I became very fond of the uh, reading the Mahaprabhu's literature. Chaitanya Bhagavata, Chaitanya all the things. So at that time I had done some uh, mistake at the lotus feet of the devotees. But I had uh, reacted to them that you are telling some fraud things. That's all my experience before coming to Krishna consciousness. Okay, so what did you learn from this? Uh, from this that uh, before knowing we should not react, we should wait and we should take the center of the devotees uh, to know more about the things before uh, reacting or telling anything or any uh, comments. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, yes. Don't rush in, right? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Good, Prabhu. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. So, someone else like to offer? Some uh, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. Maharaj, uh, like uh, before coming to Krishna consciousness, my uh, my home is very near to uh, Mother Ganga Maya. So what I will do is I will generally go and uh, generally we uh, in Kartik month before coming to Krishna consciousness only I will go to and take Ganga but but without offering obeisances I will simply go and dip in the Ganga. But uh, after coming to Krishna consciousness, I like I'm a new devotee only, so I chanted like I was chanting, but I was not knowing. Okay, we have to offer obeisances before going like before going into Ganga. So once uh, I was uh, going with my uh, Siksha Guru, so she noticed and she told, she scolded actually, this is not the way you should like directly jump into the Ganga. You should first take, uh, you should first do Archaman and then you have to offer obeisances because she's such, such a pure devotee of the Lord. And then only you have to go inside the Ganga. So from there onwards, so I understood, okay, okay. So I got this, okay. So whenever we are going, whenever we are meeting any pure devotees, Tulsi Maharani or uh, like uh, Ganga Maya, we have to offer obeisances. We simply just should not go and deep into like Ganga and all. We have to offer obeisances, respect her, and then we should take the permission and then go inside. No, mm, okay. So what did you learn? Well, that, yeah. should, that was your learning, yeah? Yeah, we learned that, okay, we have to offer, they are such a pure devotee, we have to offer our obeisances, we should not simply just go and, okay, yeah. so like, ordinary people think that, that this is just a simple thing, but they, they will not think, okay, it's like a, they will not even consider, like, I have, like, now also I'm saying, like, they will brush their teeth, like, they will, like, wash their clothes, they are not, they are treating them as normal river, we should make them, we should educate them also, this is wrong. Yes, you're right, very also. good, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, very important, very nice. And also, you know, about people putting their feet into Ganga. Sometimes, you know, they sit on the boat and they'll put their feet in the Ganga. That's yeah. very bad also. Mm. So, it's, like, it's like our mother. How can, like, we have to educate them. How can you put, like, can you put feet on your mother? It's like mother only. We should not do it. We have to educate them also at the same time. Right. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. So we have to not properly how to respect Mother Ganga. Anybody else like to offer? Yes, Guru Maharaj, can I, yes. Can I try? Yes, uh, please. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> you know, after I got my first initiation, because in Singapore, um, you know, we are, we do not have many devotees, we do not have full-time devotees doing deity um, service. So I was asked to do the Syana Arati service. And for many weeks, I was actually struggling with the mantras and you know, I always used to speak to the Lord or offer my prayers to the Lord in English. <laughs> so, you know, they are Sanskrit prayers, but I was struggling to memorize them and I was always doing it in English. So, What are these uh, prayers? What prayers? 
Yeah, so for example, when you want to offer the milk to the Lord, when you want to put the deities to the Lord, uh, the, the deities to rest, etc. So, oh, okay. yeah. Uh-huh. I always struggle with the screen and I, 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 you know, address the prayers in, in English. I, I know it's an offense, um, but my, my, my learning is um, not related to this, but Many a times when, when newcomers come into the movement, there is a tendency of one who is senior to not in a very, um, you know, not in a very um, tactful way correct devotees, mm. right? So sometimes yeah. there's a lot of pub- public blaspheming or public correction. And newcomers, they just feel very bad about it. Yeah. I think, you know, as part of devotee care, we should be very, very careful because sometimes people's sentiments are so badly hurt when others are corrected. And this this particular scenario where Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and yet he was so kind to Arjuna, he never even told himself, uh, told Arjuna that, oh, you should address me as follows, etc. You know? mm. So, yeah, I think that's a wonderful learning for all of us that when, when, when people are new in the movement, we should be very, very careful in, in you know, yes, dealing with Yes, right. Them. Yeah. We had a program, I remember at one point, when I was in the, at the Brooklyn Temple in New York in the 1970s, we had a program, new devotees, that we would bring them to, up to the front of the altar to see the deities properly, and then we would give them the garland also. We'd give them a nice flower garland, so we really tried to honor them as new devotees. That helped to make it uh, easier for people coming into Krishna consciousness. And it, it, it also instructed all the other devotees that, you know, a new person, that we should honor them, we should welcome them into our community. Sometimes we make, a, some people make it difficult for people to come into the community. <laughs> just by, as you say, you know, pointing out their mistakes. Don't do this, don't do that. You know? <laughs> Stand up, bow down. <laughs> oh my goodness. So many things. It's, it's really quite a challenge to come into Krishna consciousness because there's so many things to learn. Actually, uh, I was just remembering something to add to this. I heard in one of Gauran Prabhu's lecture that he always says, Aap sirf Krishna ko apne life mein jodi hai. And uh, you need not leave anything, you just add Krishna into your life. Because for the newcomers, it's so difficult for them to leave on the Andar Lake or the tea and coffee. So instead of going on stressing on the don'ts, then you just stress on the do's. You just add Krishna into your life. And Krishna will automatically change everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. Yeah, uh, maybe I, 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 we used to show that movie, Hari, World of Hare Krishna. And the, in one of the movies, there was a film of a devotee in Hawaii selling the yacht. It was a devotee called Narahari. At that time, he had a yacht, a Hare Krishna yacht, and he was sailing it around the islands in Hawaii. And so he was there and he was saying, you, you know, you don't have to add anything. You don't have to change anything. You just have to... <laughs> just have to become Krishna conscious, you know, you, everything you do, just do it in Krishna consciousness, just change the consciousness. So he was in, encouraging people like that to become, con, just, just to become Krishna conscious. That you can do everything the same, you know, he had his boat, he was sailing his boat, you like sailing, okay, do it for Krishna, everything for Krishna. You go snorkeling or diving, you know, do it for Krishna. <laughs> I don't know. But this idea in the beginning like that, trying to bring people into Krishna consciousness. So, making it easier for them to come in. Anybody else? Oh. Yes. Uh, in our group, it was myself, Sakir and Devi and Bhutmini Mohan Prabhu. So we were discussing how, uh, uh, as new devotees, what happens is sometimes we approach the Lord for something which we shouldn't, and then if the Lord doesn't fulfill our desire, then we go on to um, and accuse the Lord. So and 
um, that is very offensive. But eventually, when we hear from our seniors that is not the right mood, then we beg for forgiveness. And then the Pani Mandrugu was mentioning how, as new devotees, sometimes we commit offenses to the Vaishnavas, but eventually, when we um, make progress, uh, then we understand that we were not supposed to do something which we did, and then we go and wait for forgiveness. So the lesson from this is always uh, remaining in the um, taking shelter of devotees and uh, taking guidance from the, them, and not acting whimsically, so that we know what we should do and we should not. And then, if at all we have done something wrong, we should go and wait for forgiveness. Thank you. Uh, okay. When we talk about offenses, this is an offense, oh, this is, you're offensive, you know. <laughs> uh, we have to understand, I mean, generally these kind of things are, it's a small mistake. It's not actually really offense. I don't know if it's really, if that's the correct word to say it's an offense, but we make mistakes. We don't know the culture, so we do something which we shouldn't have done like that. But to call it an offence, oh, you're offensive, you're offensive. <laughs> mm, that's a, a little bit strong, it's a strong word, you know. I think we have to be a bit careful about using that word. Make, make some mistake, that's all. It can be corrected. Okay, we'll go ahead. Here's Bhagavad Gita 1146. O universal form, O thousand-armed Lord, I wish to see you in your forearm form, with helmeted head and with club, wheel, conch and lotus flower in your hands. I long to see you in that form. So Arjuna had seen the Vishwarup, now he wants to see Chaturbhuj, right? The four-handed form of the Lord. Here is the commentary from this, uh, this is uh, Bhagavad Gita, text 45 from Bhagavad Gita. In Brahma Samhita 539, it is stated, Ramadi Murti Shukala Niyamena Teshtan. The Lord is eternally situated in hundreds and thousands of forms, and the main forms are those like Rama. Narsimha, Narayan, etc. Mm, okay, so Brahma Samhita establishing different forms of the Lord and the main ones mentioned. There are innumerable forms, but Arjuna knew that Krishna is the original personality of Godhead, assuming his temporary universal form. He is now asking to see the form of Narayan, a spiritual form. So this verse establishes without any doubt the statement of the Srimad Bhagavatam that Krishna is the original personality of Godhead and all other features originate from him. Generally, we quote Srimad Bhagavatam, Ite Chamsa Kalapumsa, Krishna's tu Bhagavan Swayam. Indriyani Vyakulam Lokam Mridayanti Yuge Yuge. Krishna is the Bhagavan Swayam, he's the original personality of Godhead. Narayan and other forms, they're all coming from the original form of Lord Krishna. And Brahma Samhita also, they give the example about the candle. You can light many candles, but there has to be one original candle to light the other candles. So Krishna is the original personality of Godhead, and all of the other features like Rama and Narsimha and Narayan, they're all coming from that original form. And this is support from this verse in the Bhagavad Gita, that Arjuna wants to see the four-armed form. It must be that Krishna's two-armed form is original, otherwise how else could he show it? Uh, 
purport again, 46. Arjuna knew that Krishna is the original personality of Godhead, assuming his temporary universal form. He is now asking to see the form of Narayan, a spiritual form. So this verse establishes without any doubt the statement of the Srimad Bhagavatam that Krishna is the original personality of Godhead and all other features originate from him. He is not different from his plenary expansions and he is God in any of his innumerable forms. In all of these forms he is fresh like a young man. That is the constant feature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One who knows Krishna becomes free at once from all contamination of the material world. So Prabhupada mentioned some interesting points here. He said that Krishna is always like a young man. He's Nava Yovana, right? He's always the eternal youth. He, sometimes people think of God as an old man, but rather God is just the opposite. He's eternally youthful. So, like 16 years old. Mm -hmm. He looks like 16. Yes, Prabhu, what's that? Actually, he always looks like a 16 year old, old boy. 16 year, 1 6. One six. He always looks like a sixteen-year-old boy. Oh, like a sixteen, sixteen-year-old boy. He looks like a sixteen-year-old boy. Yes, he's eternally youthful. Youth. He doesn't grow fast, right? We all yes. want. We like to grow up to the age of sixteen or eighty. Krishna grows to there, and he doesn't go beyond there. And this way, he can enjoy eternally youth, eternal youth. Okay, and then the last section, 47 to 55, only pure devotees can see Krishna's two-armed form. This is from Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur again. Oh Arjuna, you have said that you desire to see my majestic form, that was in verse 3. And by your request, I have shown the form of the universe, which is one of my parts. Why has your mind become disturbed on seeing it? Is it not astonishing that you plead with me, wanting me to, you wanting, not wanting now to see my human form? Thus the Lord speaks this verse. Being pleased with you, I have shown this form to you alone and not to anyone else, since it has, it has not been seen previously by anyone. In spite of that, do you not want to see that form? So same thing is mentioned here. In this verse from Bhagavad Gita, verse number 48. O best of the Kuru warriors, no one before you has ever seen this universal form of mine. For neither by studying the Vedas, nor by performing sacrifices, nor by charity, nor by pious activities, nor by severe penances can I be seen in this form in the material world. So sometimes we wonder, well, didn't Duryodhana see the universal form? We know when Lord Krishna had gone to the palace to deliver the letter from the Pandavas requesting Duryodhana and the Kauravas that let's try to settle this peacefully without the battle of Kurukshetra. 
at that time Krishna had brought the letter to Duryodhana and of course Duryodhana and Dhritarashtra, they didn't accept it. They were not interested. They wanted war. And so then Krishna was returning. But when Krishna was returning, Duryodhana tried to capture Lord Krishna. He tried to arrest Krishna. And so at that time Krishna assumed a universal form. He also took a, a, a form of the Vishwarup. And seeing that Vishwarup, then Duryodhana was unable to arrest him. But that form which Krishna showed there to Duryodhana, that was a different universal form to the form which Lord Krishna is showing to Arjuna. And we also know that Lord Krishna had opened his mouth and showed the whole universe in his mouth to Mother Yashoda. So those were different forms. But the form which was shown to Arjuna, that was a special form. As we know, the Kala Rup was shown to Arjuna. So he saw the, all the people dying, all the great warriors, Bhishma, Drona, Karna, they were all dying. So that, was, that form was shown to Arjuna. So it's a very special universal form which no one had seen before. All right, so some preaching. You're good preachers. So we want some answers to some of these questions. <laughs> see how many of you can, see if you can answer some of these questions. We've got 18 people here, right? Yes, Guru Maharaj. So we'll have uh, maybe six, six groups, groups of three. Yeah? Do we, okay. Can everyone take part? We'll have six groups with three people. The first question. Krishna is one of the ten incarnations of Vishnu. Is it right or wrong? Wrong. 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 <laughs> so, you have to answer on the basis of Shastra. Right? And ideally from the 11th chapter of the Gita. Anyway, we'll take the questions, we'll go through them. I'll just read them out to you. And then each group you can try to answer them. Someone else said, I have personally seen Sandwich Baba's universal form. <laughs> Number three, I do not personally claim to be God, but my followers do. And I must accept whatever they offer me with love. It's not what they offer, but the fact that they do it with love that makes me obliged. That's number three. Number four, Arjuna's satisfaction at finally seeing Krishna's two-armed form is a classic example of anthropomorphism, meaning man making God in his own image and protect, projecting his own concepts onto God, who therefore has no such form. And then number five, the universal form is greater than Krishna himself. And number six, we can see Krishna by severe penances, by giving charity and by worshipping him. He himself recommends all these processes in the Gita itself. So you, there's a lot of questions. Let's divide the questions to the groups. Maybe one, groups one and two can take the first, the first two questions, right? Groups one and two. We've got six groups, right? So, yes, Guru Maharaj. Six groups. So group one and two will take the first two questions. Krishna is one of the ten incarnations of Vishnu and I have personally seen Sandwich Baba's universal form. And then group three and four will take questions three and four. And, and then the last two questions are for five and six. So you have to make a note of your questions. 
here, the universal form is greater than Krishna himself. Is it possible? Is it? How are you going to defeat this? We can see Krishna by severe penances, by giving charity, by worshipping him. He himself recommends all these processes in the Gita itself. So, if you can... Uh, Maharaj, yes? the, reference, the reference should be from 11th chapter or you can quote from anywhere. Well, if you can, from 11th chapter, and if not, then you can take from other places. Okay. Right? But if you can, ideally try to get it from 11th chapter. As okay, good much. How much of time? 10 minutes? Yeah. Okay. If you need 10 minutes. Six.
Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, we are all back. All right. So can we hear from group one and two about question number one? Maybe group one can take question one. Hare Krishna Maharaj, I will be speaking on behalf of my group. Yes. And my group members consist of Yashoda Mataji and Dayanidhi Prabhuji. Um, so the first question is, Is Krishna is one of the ten incarnations of Vishnu. Uh, it's a no, because Krishna is the avatari. And whatever comes out of Krishna, I mean, whoever comes out of Krishna, the expansion of Krishna is the... Um, Incarnation or the avatar of Krishna. Hare Krishna. Have we got some scriptural evidence for this? Uh, it says Krishna through Bhagwan Swayam in one of the shlokas. Okay. Yes, Prabhu, in Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, first canto, uh, chapter 28 verse, it says, Ete chamsa kalaha kumsaha Krishna stu Bhagavan Swayam indari vyakulam lokam midrayanti yuge yuge. All of the above mentioned incarnation are either plenary portions or portions of the plenary portions of the Lord. But Lord Sri Krishna is the original personality of Godhead. All right. Would any other people, any other devotees like to contribute to this? How could we understand Krishna not being one of the ten incarnations of Vishnu? Krishna Maharaj, um, from group two, we also did question one as well. And here also in chapter 11, Krishna, Arjun himself is asking Krishna, please show me your uh, four-armed form. So we can also understand that from Krishna comes Narayan rather than Narayan come. Yes, right. It's right there in the 11th chapter. Yes, good. Well done, Mataji. Yes, that's the correct answer. Yes. And do you have the answer? In Chaitanya, in Chaitanya, it is uh, given that I... What's that? Hi, Krishna Prabhu, is it, you are there? Okay, let's go on. Second question, group number one. Okay, our group. Oh, sorry. Group one, yes. How do you answer number two? We've seen Sandwich Baba's universal form. <laughs> Actually, to see the universal form of the Lord, divine power is required. And that divine power had given by Lord Krishna to Arjuna only. So a, a person who is claiming he is a fool only, and he is uh, just making some fraud remarks. Because a material person, how he can see the universal form, for who, who is divine power is from Krishna is required. So this statement is fully a wrong statement. Okay. Group number two, how do you answer this one? Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, uh, here, reading this statement, we concluded that this is a very, uh, someone who is a blind follower, is following someone who has proclaimed himself. So to make it um, uh, truthful, we can say, yes, we also surrender to your sandwich Baba. <laughs> Let him show his universal form to us. <laughs> Yes, very good. Yeah, very nice, Maharaj. Thank you. All right. Any any other contributions to these questions from other people? In text forty seven, it is also said that uh, the Lord is saying very clearly to Arjuna that I have not shown this form to anyone, so I am just showing it only to you. So it's like uh, the Lord is not showing his universal form to anyone else. But didn't uh, Sanjay see it? What, what Sanjay, 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 Sanjay. Yeah, Sanjay also saw it. Yeah, and Sanjay also saw it. Sanjay, Sanjay saw it, yes, right. It was not a Sanjay, Sanjay, Sanjay actually, Krishna gave the divine special power to Arjuna uh, to, the, to see the divine power. But Vyasadeva had not given, given the divine eye to Sanjay to see the universal power. He had got the divine eye to see the Mahabharata in details. Well, it appears like Sanjay also saw the universal form. I never heard before that he didn't see 
Maharaj, I also heard that uh, Bhishma was also able to see the universal form. I don't know. Yes, I that. think. But, I but, think... but not in this Mahabharata. War. That was he had seen in the royal, uh, no, no, no. The royal place. Peacemaking. Peace I don't know. I, I don't have any reference on that. But, uh, I heard that. I don't know whether I'm Yeah, correct. only the few selected devotees uh, whom the Lord felt. Right. Yeah. A few selected devotees, a few special souls could see. Right. Yes. Cer certainly, uh, Arjuna and Sanjay. Sanjay saw by the grace of Vyas. And Prabhu is saying, well, he could hear, but it doesn't mean that he necessarily saw the universal form. But uh, I don't know. But what? Uh, yes, they cannot give the power to Sanjay for the universal form. Krishna can only give. That is my claim. Oh. But uh, Srila Vyasdev is Krishna himself, so if he gave yes. the eyes, he would see everything he is, as well. He is, he is Shakti Avatar, he is not full. He is not 64 colors. Uh, actually, I just have something that maybe it's slightly uh. Uh, Actually, uh, uh, when Dhruva Maharaj, uh, yeah, uh, he saw the Lord and he wanted to see him again. Uh, is it Dhruva Maharaj? Mm -hmm. uh, no, someone, I don't remember. When, then why are you behind seeing me? Uh, it means, uh, so we can ask the question, what do you get by seeing the, okay, okay, I accept that you have seen the universal form. What do you want to do out of this? What do you get out of this? Are you going to come out of the cycle of repeated birth and death just because you have seen the universal form? Okay, I can't prove that you haven't seen. Okay, you want to say that you have seen, but... Uh, Oh, what did you get out of it? Okay, what did you learn from it? Okay, Maharaji, that's an interesting point, an important point, yes. The real point in seeing the universal form, it should inspire us to be servants, to become the servant of the Supreme Lord. That's the real point. Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead. Uh, it's an interesting point Prabhu has brought up, though I appreciate, I'll think more about that, that he's saying that... Uh, only Krishna could get eyes to see the universal form, and he's thinking maybe Sanjay didn't see it. I don't know. Okay, next, group number three and four. Group number three first. I do not personally claim to be God, but my followers do. Okay, how do you answer this? Is someone there from group number three? Hare Krishna Maharaj, um, we prepared the question number four and five, uh, but we'd like to contribute on this question as well. Um, yes, we have seen in, in India, there are sadhus and babajis, they are claiming that um, everybody calls me God. I did not say it, but my followers do, and I accept that. So. Um, as Mataji mentioned earlier, it is a blind faith that someone um, someone sees God and some person. Um, at the same time, the person also um, cannot be a devotee of a servant of God who accepts this. So as soon as someone accepts that they are a divine person, means they are um, they are against that they are the they are this pure servant of God um, that's my opinion Aras. you're saying <clears throat> your point is that as soon as someone claims to be a divine person then he, he forgets that he's servant of God oh yes servant of Krishna and he is also forgetting that uh, Krishna is God. Okay. Yes. Any other response and uh, is any other group tackle this question? Like for example also Maharaj, um, the example for this is the Hiranyakashipu. Uh-huh. Um, to Prahlad Maharaj he, he he claimed himself a divine person uh, for a reason because 
there was no um, a stronger person than him who could defeat him. That's why he claimed that he was the most powerful person in the universe. And the most powerful person in the universe is God. So he called himself God. <laughs> All right. Maharaj, can I say something? Yes, please do, Maharaj. Maharaj, here he is saying that whatever my followers will offer me with love, I will accept. So if he is given something which he cannot uh, uh, live with, like in sense is given poison or something, will he accept that as well? And also the point is that if someone do call you God, then we should always become humble if we are really a devotee. You will say, I'm a servant of the servant of seven, even though they say, just like how we um, uh, we read in Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Shiva, Narad Muni, Brahma are addressed as Lord, but they do not ever claim that they are God. And Srila Prabhupada in this context always said, if anyone says they are God, then they are actually uh, the backward spelling. <laughs> Instead of G-O-T, D-O-G. <laughs> And biggest, biggest rascal. Yes, good. May I add one point regarding this? Same question. We also uh, did the three and four. So we had something to contribute. Uh, actually, I had shared long uh, some time back that I was also under uh, some kind of pseudo <laughs> uh, so-called God. I was following. I, as a child, I didn't know I was. But uh, luckily, I was telling that I didn't learn the translations. I learned the Bhagavad Gita. So I didn't know what he was claiming, just that I attended some of their classes and uh, later on I came to know that he was actually claiming, he, he was just saying the same thing. He, he doesn't personally claim to be God, but his followers make him God, so he's accepting it. So if he's really um, that kind of a person who understands that he's not God, if he's really trying to help the public, then he should make it very clear to the public that he cannot be God and please don't um, uh, consider me as God. Sometimes uh, the youngsters come and do pranam, oh, you're like my God, they say. Then we should immediately say that I, um, I will definitely um, give my blessings, but I cannot um, become God and I cannot, uh, you know, you cannot consider me as God. So we, whatever, even if they ignorantly do, we give the... Uh, Whatever they are offering, immediately we offer it back to Krishna. So uh, it is our duty to uh, um, tell the public that we are not God. So yes. in that he is a Gugogas person. Right. Certainly, even when uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's followers wanted to claim him as God, then he would get very upset with them and he'd say, I'm going yeah. to go, I'm going to leave. <laughs> Amarnyamai Prabhu and Preeti Priyanka Mataji was, uh, uh, were telling about uh, Srila Prabhupada's, uh, uh, someone said that Srila Prabhupada uh, is God and immediately Prabhupada chastised him. So even if he, uh, yes, Prabhupada is the, even if he was the Shakya Veshavatra, but he wanted to set an example to the world that, you know, you cannot make any human being God. So he right. immediately, right. you know, yes. show, show it to Krishna. So, yes, it's a duty. Maharaj, I can add, uh, Actually, uh, whenever we uh, give anything to Krishna in love, Krishna returns back uh, in thousands of times or in finite times. Like uh, when Suddhama gave one uh, handful of uh, rice, but Krishna returned many things. So if a person is claiming like that, then we should claim at that time, we just return back. I will give one food, return two, three buildings. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> so that person cannot uh, return back. Another thing is that if a person is a person should not claim as a god. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was doing Gundicha Marjan and one person poured water in her lotus feet, then Mahaprabhu slashed him. Yes. And uh, at that time, uh, <coughs> Raya Ramananda Surabdha convinced him and take it away from them and he told them he is Christian but he just gave him some blessings. Okay. Not clear, so that he... All right, we have to go on. Number four. Um, Guru Maharaj, um, I have a flight to catch, um, so I'll be leaving the class uh, shortly. Very, very sorry, Guru Maharaj. Okay, Prabhu, have a good flight, have a good trip. Maharaj, may I also add a point to this question, to yes. this claim? 
Yes. Yes. Uh, like we can ask that person, do you come from a from a discipline sex, succession from a authorized sampradaya to be claiming that you you are God, and and uh, on what scriptures he's he he's taking reference when he says so? Maybe we can answer like that. Mm, yeah. Well, <laughs> you were beginning a new sampradaya, is it? Yeah. Because we have four Thurasa Bodhayas, maybe if you should tell that person, what, what, of course, how are you living? It, it, it can be that they're simply Mayavadis. Mayavadis, you know, they all become God. They all, so they all become God. You meet a Mayavadi sannyasi, you address him as nam, Namo Narayan, you see them as God. And generally impersonal sannyasis, you know, Mayavadi groups, they're all, the head of the Guru, is, is, the Guru is God. That's a, everyone becomes God, you become God. In Buddhism, everyone becomes a Buddha, and in, in, in personalism, everyone's going to become one with the Supreme. Okay. So it's really Maya body. What about number four? This anthropomorphism. Uh, from group number three, anyone there? Okay, I, I'll start away. We are from group number four, Maharaj. Uh -huh. um, so um, the anthropomorphism, what uh, they are talking about basically is uh, uh, Krishna requesting, uh, uh, sorry, Arjuna requesting Krishna to come back to his original form, what he has seen before and what he was relating to. Basically, uh, there are there are so many people who relate to different forms of the Lord. Uh, so that doesn't mean that they are creating the new concepts on their own. So uh, uh, Krishna in his original form was uh, a friend of Krishna. Uh, sorry, Arjuna. Uh, so, the requesting him to come back is not uh, uh, projecting an image of uh, uh, anthropomorphism kind of thing. So, it is basically uh, coming back to his original form, nothing uh, different from that. So, Krishna in his original form, Adi Purusham, is, is in his uh, two handed form only. So, there is no uh, difference between this form and that form. So, he's not creating a, uh, or projecting his own concept of God. Okay. So that's what. Yes. All right. Krishna, Maharaj, I, would like, I would like to add one more point, Maharaj. Shall I, Maharaj? Yeah, all right. Uh, it's that man making God in this own image. Man, actually, God is certainly situated. That is, Ishwara Parama Krishna Sachi Dhananda Vikra, Anadi Dhar Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam. This is himself. God is certainly situated in this own realm. Hare Krishna. Okay. Thank you, Prabhu. All right, we want to go on number five, group five and six. The universal form is greater than Krishna himself. Oh. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. So, uh, Padma Lochan Prabhu and Renuka Mataji, and I was in this group, uh, group number, I think group number six. Uh, here we discussed that uh, Actually, the universal form is not a form that is there in the spiritual world. It's not an eternal form. The form is a temporary form in the material world. And Lord Krishna first showed that, you know, universal form. And then gradually uh, to calm Arjuna, then he showed his Narayana form. And then at last it's mentioned here, the Swami Vapu, the very beautiful form, Swami Vapu. Srila Prabhupada mentions in paper that this word is very significant. Uh, so, uh, uh, we see that uh, in the Sham Sundar form, the, that is the Lord's original form, and uh, the universal form is there for the neophytes, actually, you know, uh, who cannot conceive this form, this uh, take, uh, accept uh, that God would have a uh, human form, two armed form, that is the original form. Okay. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. Yes. All right, then question number six. We can see Krishna by severe penance, by charity, by worship. He himself recommends all these processes in the Gita itself. Not a very difficult question. Yes? Hi Krishna Maharaj, yes, can you ma describe myself as a Yes. And 
In text number 47, Krishna says that he showed this universal form to Arjuna, being pleased with Arjuna. And then in the later verses, in 54 and 55, Krishna says that it is by devotional service that the Lord, by, by performance of devotional service, the Lord is pleased and then the Lord, Lord reveals himself to the devotee. So it is not by mere penance and austerities that a person will be able to see the form of the Lord. It's only by devotion Krishna shows himself, huh? Having devotional service. Yes, right. Bhakti maam abhijananti. Right. Bhakti maam abhijananti. Okay, very good. Yes, that's correct. We'll go ahead. O oh, Supreme Lord, why do you not understand me? You are forcibly giving me something which I do not want. Seeing this form of yours, my limbs are distressed, my mind is pained, constantly I am fainting. Let, my, let me offer my respects again and again to that majestic form from far away. I will never again pray to see that form. Forgive me, forgive me, show to me that human form with with moonlike face, covered in showers of nectar through the sweetest smiles. Please show that to me. The Lord then speaks this verse in a, in a comforting mood to Arjuna, who is distressed in the above manner. Prabhupada makes a point here. The police officer firing a revolver. Suppose the boy's father is a police officer. So if the father comes as a police officer firing a revolver, even the child will forget loving father. You see? So naturally the child loves father when he's at home, just like father. Similarly, we love Krishna as he is, Shamsundar. The Vishwarup was shown to Arjuna to warn the rascal humanity because Krishna said, I am God imitating Krishna. So many rascals declaring that I am God. Therefore, Arjuna said, please show me your Vishwarup so that these rascals may also ask him to show his Vishwarup. So, if you are God, please show me your Vishwarup. These rascals may also ask him to show his Vishwarup. So, the challenge to the end, the challenge to these people: if you are God, show the Vishwarup. Sanjay said to Dhritarashtra. The Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna, having spoken thus to Arjuna, displayed his real forearm form and at last showed his two-arm form, thus encouraging the fearful Arjuna. There that Somyavapu is mentioned there in the final line there, Bhutva Puna Somyavapu Mahatma. Right? The two-arm form, the somyavapu, very sweet form, the two-arm form. When Krishna appeared as the son of Vasudeva and Devaki, he first of all appeared as forearm Narayan. But when he was requested by his parents, he transformed himself into an ordinary child in appearance. Similarly, Krishna knew that Arjuna was not interested in seeing a four-handed form. But since Arjuna asked to see his four-handed form, Krishna also showed him this form again and then showed himself in his two-handed form. Text 52. The Supreme Personality of God had said, My dear Arjuna, this form of mine you are now seeing is very difficult to behold. Even the demigods are ever seeking the opportunity to see this form, which is so dear. Now, here the word 
Sudurdarshan is used, indicating that Krishna's two-handed form is still more confidential. One may be able to see the universal form of Krishna by adding a little tinge of devotional service to various activities like penances, Vedic study and philosophical speculation. It may be possible, but without a tinge of bhakti, one cannot see, one cannot see that has already been explained. Still, beyond that universal form, the form of Krishna with two hands is still more difficult to see, even for demigods like Brahma and Lord Shiva. Here, the Lord glorifies in three verses his Vishwarup, which he showed. The devatas desire to see the Vishwarup, but cannot see it. But you do not desire that form at all. How can, you, how can your two eyes, which continually taste the great sweetness of my human form, which is the original form, enjoy that universal form? Therefore, I give you divya eyes to see it. Divya divyam dadami chatsu. But though I gave Divya heavenly eyes, I did not give you a Divya mind. Thus, by these Divya eyes alone, you cannot enjoy completely that form, because your mind is, because your mind relishes only the great sweetness of my human form. If I had given you a Divya mind, then you would have relished that Swarup of the Purush as a universal form, as a, as, just as Devatas do. All right, we'll leave these last two verses for the Bhagavad Gita. We can finish them next week. Text 54 describing only by devotion, can I be understood? Only in this way can I be seen directly, only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding, right? Not by charity, not by any other way. And the last verse, okay, oh no, this is... This is cool. All right, we won't go any further. We'll stop here. We'll finish this next week. Are there any questions? Maharaj, I have one question. Yes. In Bhakti Vedan purport, it is written that this universal form is material and temporary, as the material world is temporary. Yes. Actually, Krishna's form and Krishna himself are same and both eternal and spiritual. So why this universal form is material? Why is it material? Because it's, 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 it's because it's made up of it all the spiritual because Krishna. Huh? It's not actually yeah, you want to know why it's material. Uh, it's, why it's, it's not material. an eternal form. It's a temporary form. It's not eternal. It's made up of all the elements of the material creation. Everything is in it. We're also in there. All the different varnas and ashrams, everything is there within the universal form. It's a temporary form made up of all the different elements of the creation. So it's material. Uh, Maharaj, I also heard that uh, uh, Krishna enters this form uh, later on. Uh, once it is created, it, uh, there is no Lord inside and then Lord enters this form. Is that correct, Maharaj? Uh, it may be like that. Uh, I think maybe something like that is described in the, in the third canto in Kapila Shiksha. 
how they bring the the creation to life that the Lord has to enter into everything and only then comes about then everything starts to happen yeah you can check yes Divya mind, I couldn't get what is this Divya mind? The Divya mind. Well, yeah. the trans just like D Divya eyes, you have to have transcendent divine vision to see the Lord. You have to have a purified mind to understand the Lord. Without so the, the demigods generally they say that even the demigods can't understand the Lord. So you said the uh, Divya mind, uh, the demigods are given or something. So I didn't get it. Well, this is a quote from. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, that was, uh, you, uh, you have to, I'd have to check that, uh, and the... Somewhere uh, it's written, no, even the demigods can't understand me, um, so are they given the Divya mind? Uh... <laughs> the demigods? No. Demigods generally, they're not, <laughs> they said they want to understand, right, but they're not. Uh, where is it? Kadamu. Vishwa Nachakan. And uh, one more. Oh, no. Mo. Must be the other way, right? Forward. Forward. 52. Verse 52. This is the comment 52. Okay. The Bhim Tadam Te Chaksu. Mm hmm. Are you told in verse 52? 52. Is there not about the commentary? Verse 52. Okay, here. Next one. Next one. Yes, here. Yes, here, here only. Okay, right. The devatas desire to see the Vishwaroop but cannot see it. All right. So Krishna gave Arjuna divine eyes to see it. But, though I gave Divya heavenly eyes, I did not give you a Divya mind. Thus, by these Divya eyes alone, you cannot enjoy completely that form. Because your mind, because your mind relishes only the great sweetness of my human form. Right? The human form. There's, it's much more sweeter. Yeah. The universal form. There's, there's no sweetness there. It's only Aishwarya. A so god, last, it's a godless form of opulence. The last line talks about uh, the Divya mind, then you would have relished the Swarupa of the Purusha as the universal form, just as Devatas do. So does that mean that Devatas can uh, uh, relish, uh, you know, the, the, they have the Divya mind to uh, understand the Lord? Somewhere else I read it in a contradictory uh, way that the Devatas themselves can't understand the Lord. Yes. What is this? They you would have relished that Swarupa of the Purush. The, as a, of the Swarupa of the Purush as a universal form. Just as David... But David tells they, rel, they do have some... Is it in some higher planets the Purusha is there, the Maha Purusha is there. And there's great sages there worshipping the Mahapurush. I don't know if he's referring to this. But it's not clear. This is Vishwanath Chakra. I'll have to look in his commentary and see if some more information is there on that. Only it is given in that small thing. Huh? This much has given in that uh, commentary, Vishwanath Chakravarti commentary, right, nothing more right, than that. Right, it's in his commentary. I'll, I'll have to look and see what he's talking about. It's, you see, this is the problem. We get translation. Uh, it's not, maybe not been edited so well as our BBT books, you know, BBT editing. 
very, they're very careful. But whoever translated this Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's commentary, it was, you know, he wrote his commentary in Sanskrit probably, it's translated. I have to ask Banu Swami or someone, maybe Banu Swami could guide us on that because he's translated these things. This is a problem when we go into, you see actually somebody put these Vishwanath Chakravarti quotes into my PowerPoint presentation, they added these things in to my PowerPoint. It's better we don't use it actually because it's confusing. I don't know what is actually talked about here. Relishing that Swarupa of the Purush as a universal form. The, the form, the Swarupa of the Purush as a universal form, just as Devatas do. But we also say the Devatas don't relish the universal form. It, it could be that he's talking about the Mahapurush who resides there in the heavenly, in the higher planets because the demigods, they do yagya and, the, and they may offer, the, the, the Lord is there, he takes the offerings from the devas. I don't know. We'll have, I'll try to find out from Banu Swami who translated this. Uh, yes, Maharaj, thank you. Uh, Maharaj, one, one, one question. Yeah. Uh, Hare Krishna. Divya uh, Mind, this, that is transcendental knowledge, is it right, Maharaj? Yes. Transcendental uh, knowledge. But uh, in previous chapter, uh, Krishna spoke this transcendental knowledge to Arjuna before, but why is telling, I didn't give you Divya, Divya Mind like that? Uh. Well, he, that was a special, special vision, heavenly eyes. It didn't say, it, they translated the Divya as heavenly eyes. So he, he didn't give him a heavenly mind to appreciate the Vishwarup. Right? It's this Aishwarya, to see this universal form, Arjuna was given heavenly eyes. Not really transcendental eyes, but heavenly eyes. And so it, it, it's, it's saying that Krishna said, I didn't give you a divya mind. I didn't, I didn't give you the heavenly mind. And that's why you cannot appreciate the universal form. Arjuna can only appreciate the sweet form of the two, the two arm form of Lord Krishna. He cannot appreciate the, the form of the uh, the universe, which is shown there. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Just the uh, preaching point I was reading here. We do see in chapter 11 that uh, Krishna is now from his forearm, uh, from he's showing his forearm and then he's coming back to his original two arm form. But in verse 53, Prashra Bhopad is mentioning in the puppet in the beginning that Krishna appeared um, before Madha Deviki and Vasudeva in the four arm form and then later transform him, himself into two arm form and I think most of the time when we are preaching because uh, it comes in the Narayan form first so they're saying that uh, from Narayan comes Vishnu I mean Krishna so um, here Shabhupada is mentioning these mysteries very difficult to understand so how would we put it I normally say this is to convince Devaki and Vasudev that he is uh, the supreme personality of Godhead just to make them reassure that his son is because she was very frightful of Kansas uh, um, killing all the other sons yes so is it to convince Devaki that he came in the two arm form a four arm form personally first yes right that's right to convince them that the Lord himself was coming and they don't have to be, they wouldn't be so afraid. Okay. Of course. And is it true also that Devaki is, uh, in the previous uh, uh, birth, she was KK? She was... Mother KK? Mother KK in Lord Ram's no, past time? I've never heard that. 
They were born to Supapan. No, we heard Vasudev and Devaki, they got the Lord as their child three times, right? Yeah. Yes. First is Prishni and Sutapa, and then is Kashyapa and Aditi, and then is yes. Vasudev and Devaki. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did someone Mara, send me an article? Sorry? Sorry, Mataji. You go ahead. Someone sent me articles saying that when after Lord Krishna killed Devaki, then um, Devaki asked Lord Krishna that you are the supreme personality of Godhead. Then why did you wait 14 years? Then you came and released us from this jail. Why didn't you come earlier? And in the comment, it was mentioned that uh, I don't know whether the source is this is a devotee sending this article. I will ask her where the where she got the phone. Then she and in the comment, it is mentioned that Krishna is saying that you you only send me away fourteen years yourself. So that's why now you have to wait for fourteen years before I come. So then only Krishna is saying that uh, you are KK in your previous birth. And then uh, Devaki is asking then who is Kaushalya. And then Lord Shri Krishna is saying, Kaushalya is Mother Yashoda. <laughs> so she missed the 14 years of her and <laughs> childhood pastime. So that's why I relished it with her. But she missed and then I'm here with you after that 14 years. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah. Interesting. You cannot ask him to the body of Krishna also. Uh -huh. Oh. It is not accepted by the Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharyas. Really? This concept. Uh huh. Yeah, I've never heard that before, certainly. Where is yes. it? Where is it from? There was a Mataji sent it. I'll ask her to give me the reference book. Yeah, it's I, certainly, I certainly, yeah, certainly I nothing we've heard yes. from the Acharyas, from our Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharyas. Yes? Prabhu? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, just one question, um, it's related to the group question earlier, uh, Krishna being incarnation of God or God is being incarnation of Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam mentions that um, out of 24 avatars, uh, Krishna and Balram being 19th and 20th. Um, also Vishnu Puran mentions the the Krishna being the incarnation of God. So, same scripture, same writer, <laughs> mentioned two different things. Krishna is the incarnation of God, Bhagavan, Bhagavan Sabata. And at the same time, also the verse mentions Krishna, uh, Krishna's way of Bhagavan Swain. So, how are we to understand these two different varieties under the same scripture? Well, Srimad Bhagavatam is Vyasadeva's mature contribution. After taking instruction from Narada Muni, then he wrote Srimad Bhagavatam. The other Puranas were written previously, right? So he, it, it was, and writing the Puranas, he wrote for different people, some for the mode of goodness, some for the mode of passion, some for the mode of ignorance, different books for different people. But the Srimad Bhagavatam, that is the fruit of all of the Vedas. It's, it's, it's ripened, it's, a, it's mature contribution, the highest, the topmost realization which he has. So we accept the opinion of Srimad Bhagavatam. We don't. Uh, Even on Bhagavatam Prabhu, uh, sorry, Maharaj. Um, Bhagavan's avatar Krishna is mentioned one of the incarnation and father I had Sutras is saying again uh, Krishna is Bhagavan Swain so I think within the well, same we have chapter, to understand we have to understand that at different times Krishna comes in different ages different uh, yugas and different uh, manvantaras Mananda. the Lord comes and some that you have to understand that the Lord who came in this particular time, this is the Swayam Bhagavan. But other times the Lord also comes. He also comes as Krishna. And sometimes he comes, he's just, you know, he's his uh, yoga avatar. It's not the not the Swayam Bhagavan. The Swayam Bhagavan Krishna comes only once in a day of Brahma. 
right? Only once in the day of Brahma, Swayam Bhagavan Sri Krishna comes. Other times the Lord comes. He may come as Krishna, as is Krishna also, but he's not Swayam Bhagavan Krishna. It's a different Krishna. So that, that has to be understood. Right? There's Vasudev Krishna and there's Shamsundar Krishna. So the Krishna who came 5,000 years ago to portray the pastime, his very confidential pastimes for all of his intimate devotees and the gopis, that was Swayam Bhagavan. But the other Krishna who comes may speak Bhagavad Gita and so on, that's not necessarily Swayam Bhagavan. Swayam Bhagavan Krishna is coming only once in the day of Brahma. And in every day of Brahma, Sahasra, Yuga, Pari, and Dham, we have a thousand ages taken together. So in every age you have Lord Krishna coming, but only one time is Swayam Bhagavan Krishna. Yeah? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. All right. Any other questions? Okay, so we'll meet next weekend. We hope we can finish off next weekend everything. We have to finish 11 and chapter 12. Okay, so we'll see you next week. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada. Jai. Jai. Jai.